and welcome to Smash Riding. And today is the day. Phantasm 5 Ravager is upon us. And as sad as it is, we must embark on our final journey. One I was a little bit nervous going into. I've seen this movie one time, and from what I can remember, it was batshit crazy. And with the way I tend to do things here, is I tend to walk us through the story to the best of my ability. Sometimes that is a cluster fucking on itself. And with this being crazy and insane, I worried about my ability to do just that. As it turns out, that worry was very, very, very much on the money. So we're going to do things a little bit different. Uh, instead of breaking down the story a little bit at a time, we're just going to try to shotgun blast this. I'm going to try to do the best I can in a real quick session to talk about this story. Here's the deal. Reggie is in the dimensional voids at this time. He's going through all these forks. He's trying to track the tall man. And he's beginning to lose touch on what is real and what is not and what is being made up by the tall man. And in one dimension, he is, we'll call him Road Warrior Reggie. He's on the road. He's on the move. He's trying to find the tall man. He's trying to find a way to help Mike. In the other world, is in a mental institution with dementia and Mike is there and he's trying to explain to him that he's lost his marbles and for his sale for his own sake and everyone he's been in this institution and what he's talking about are just stories they never actually happened and Reggie's bleeding between these worlds and he's not sure which is true and which is not and along the way we see uh, this giant planet sized sphere and all kind of insanity before Road Warrior Reggie finally tracks down the tall man in this one world. And the tall man gives him an ultimatum. I will let you go back to where it all began. And I will give you your wife and your kids back. Kid or kids. I think it's kid. I will give you your wife and kid. I think it was a daughter. Back. On the rule that you stay out of my way. I have plans, you're not involved, you're just an obstacle. I'll give you a little bit of time to think. Reggie wants Mike and Jody in on that deal. The Dolman's like, no, 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 no. I have plans for that one. Go think. So he sends Reggie off, and Reggie uh, just has to fight his way through the old mausoleum. I'm pretty sure they're in the mausoleum from the first movie, and it's just some green screen shit going on here. And he has to fight his way from that, and he ends up in a cave, and then the tall man pops back up. Oh, I gave you time to think. What's your answer here? Reggie wants the deal re a reworked. I don't even think he's asking for his wife and daughter anymore. He just wants Mike and Jody back, which pisses off the tall man. He's like, I don't care about your loyalty. I gave you a deal. You are pissing me off. And this is not what I'm doing. And he's like, you're not even worth bothering with. You were my, you were my amusement turned my nightmare. Off you go. And Reggie wakes up in this device with this machine on his head. And he's freaking out. And these two, what looks like a little creature, and this gravedigger come in. And they actually free him. And it is the woman he thought he ran into when he was Road Warrior as Dawn, but it's actually Jane and a guy named Chunk who's a little person, so he's able to blend in the places with the little creatures. They busted Reggie out, and they're taking him out with them. So it's like Chunk does not like him, but Chunk doesn't seem to like anybody. Him and Reggie bounce off each other terrifically, by the way. But... They end up following, they end up leading the way into three other survivors, and Mike is one of them. He had wandered out, he had survived the attack with the tall man and has been looking for Reggie ever since, and it had been ten years. And they are in war zone world now. It's ten years into the future from when everything happened, and there are giant planet side spheres firing down onto the earth. There is little creatures and silver spheres 
all over the place with all of these people fighting back. And at the very end of this PlayStation 2 graphics is Mental Institution Reggie. Because now we're bouncing back from Warzone Reggie to Mental Institution Reggie. And there's things going on there too now. Because Mike comes to see him and he tells him, me and you had the same dream. It is the realest thing I've ever experienced. And he's telling him what's happening and they decide to break out. And Reggie gets to the yard. Now granted, we're cutting in between War Roll War Roll uh War Zone Reggie and Mental Institution Reggie quickly. Back and forth, back and forth. Reggie's losing touch on reality. And War Zone Reggie even ends up on Red Planet trying to save Dawn. That fails, but Chunk blows himself up to take up the tall man and let them escape. And Reggie collapses into the yard and be before the doctors can wrestle him back into the institution, the two worlds seem to blend together into one. And they fight their way through the yard, and then the CUDA, which is now battle-tested CUDA, with machine guns and armor, pulls up and Jody's inside of it. And they peel away and are speeding away, and they're discussing going somewhere cold, because the tall man doesn't like the cold. And now Reggie closes his eyes and we start getting flashbacks of Reggie in various worlds and the Road Warrior Reggie and Warzone Reggie and Mental Institution Reggie and Reggie from the first movie and we see flashbacks of Jody in all these different movies and not Jody, Mike in all these different movies. In one world Reggie actually dies in one of them. They, uh, the movie ends with them driving across the desert. Or so you thought, there's a mid credit scene in this movie. With Chunk coming through the Dimensional Forks, he's still alive but missing a hand. And Rocky shows up to help him up. Where the fuck have you been, Rocky? If you were in this movie, you should have been one of the survivors in the war zone. That would have been amazing to see Rocky earlier. But they walk off through the desert, and as she's patching him up, the Kuda pulls up, and the three of them are inside, picking up Rocky and Chunk, and now we go to the end of the movie. And that has been Phantasm V, Ravager. I got some things to say about this movie that may make a few people upset. And then some more things to say that might make a few people upset. Let's talk about the pros first. Pro, I do enjoy Reggie here. Again, did like him better here than I have in one in the first few. Uh, Angus Grimm kills it. I'm so happy that Angus got to make this movie. Because from what I've read and what I've heard, Angus loved this movie franchise. And I'm very happy for him that he got to make this movie and he got to watch this movie before he passed. And now I'm going to put a pin in that sentence and we're going to come back to it in a bit. But, oh, I can see where they're going with this movie, right? They are uh, they're really testing the dimensions here. And they want you to be as lost and as confused as Reggie is. But not only are you lost and you're confused, but you're not getting any answers. You're not sure what's happening. You're never sure what's real and what's not real. And this is supposed to be f the finale. But you don't feel like anything has any closure in this movie. And some closure would be nice. And for a moment there, I thought the closure was that the tall man gave in. And he gave Reggie what he wanted. He wanted Mike and Jody, so the tall man gave him Mike and Jody and allowed them to retreat to the cold and be together. And the tall man's plans would still come into effect, but this movie showed them going back to the war zone after they picked up Rocky and um, Chunk. So that didn't really work out too well. I, I felt like this movie had dreams of grandeur. This is such big scale stuff is happening in this movie and they do not have the money for it. This was a 2006 movie and they oh, oh the, the CG in this movie is so rough. And there are moments of legit, what I feel is like practical gore, but appears a practical gore to me that looks really good. Especially with um, Demeter, I believe his name was. 
when he gets taken out, that looked really great. And when Dawn gets taken out, that looked really great. And then you get to the war zone, and oh boy. And you get to some of the green screen, green screen stuff that happens, and it's like, oh no. And they dream too big for what they could do. I applaud that normally. And if you can look past it, it's alright. I don't think I needed a planet, multiple planet sized silver spheres out. That looked weird. Really weird. Uh, again, Angus Grimm. Delivered again, man. Even toward the ad, man, he was 100% money. And he was money here again. And that's why I'm going to be reluctant. I know a lot of people give this a failing grade. I can't give this movie an F, though. And it is because of Angus. I am just happy. Like, well, this is going to be one of those rare occasions where I'm going to put aside my own self wanting desires and not lose my mind over a bad movie because Angus wanted to m see this movie to the end. And he did get to see this franchise to the end. And while well, it wasn't good, there was a lot of problems, but he got to see this movie come to an end. And I'm happy for him for that. So I won't give it an F. I am giving it a I'm gonna give it a D. This is still not good. But I'm not gonna give it an F. Because I have that happy story with it. Unlike the movies I actually give an F to, like Wishmaster 3, 4, The Requiem. Those movies are irritating. This movie's bad. But I'm not gonna hate it. I'm not gonna be angry that it's here. Because, like I said, Angus wanted this. But let me uh, turn in a different direction here. I think they should remake this franchise. I think there's, among these five, is one hell of a story. And I think you could bring in a Fide, Fide Alvarez, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Or even better, a Mike Flanagan driven Phantasm movie would be batshit crazy. And they, that man would have you crying over Silver Spheres. And I believe he could do it. Because amongst these five movies, as spaghetti as some of it is, I think there's a real compelling story to be told. You could find some people who, even um, the dips in uh, Phantasm V between Reggie and the Psych Ward and Reggie on the uh, Blood Warrior Reggie and Warzone Reggie, that's very reminiscent of um, The Darkness too with Jackie, whenever he would be mob boss Jackie and then whenever he'd get injured he'd be in the psych war Jackie and they were fucking with him on which one is real and you could decide even at the end to stay in the psych ward and that felt very Phantasm 5 here I don't I can't say that Phantasm 5 inspired them or anything it just felt very similar so this story can be done really well if uh, they had more budget and more time because I do think time was against them too but, with that said, I think this movie should be remade. And with that, that brings us to the end of Phantasms. Uh, it was a hell of a journey, a lot of fun. I would suggest this franchise to people to check out through themselves. And with that said, have a good night. I hope you enjoyed. Bye bye <laughs>